The unsolved case of a serial killer has an intriguing yet terrifying allure. One cannot help but wonder, who was the perpetrator? And how did they manage to evade capture? Could they still be residing in the very town that they terrorized? It is baffling to think that even after the apprehension and interrogation of over 400 individuals and a thorough investigation conducted by the FBI and the Texas Rangers, the series of murders known as the Texarkana Moonlight Murders from 1946 remain shrouded in mystery. The identity of the elusive phantom killer responsible for those gruesome crimes continued to elude us. Will we ever uncover the truth? In the quiet, sleepy town of Texarkana, nestled along the border between Texas and Arkansas, darkness fell like a shroud, casting shadows that seemed to hide sinister secrets. The year was 1946, and as the sun dipped below the horizon, the moon took center stage, casting its cold, silvery light over the town. Unbeknownst to the residents, a phantom was lurking in the shadows, and under the cloak of moonlight, it would strike fear into the hearts of all who had heard its name, the Texarkana Moonlight Murders. The Texarkana Moonlight Murders occurred in Miller County, Arkansas and Bowie County, Texas for 10 weeks between February 22nd to May 3rd of 1946. For 10 weeks, the streets of Texarkana were haunted by a series of grisly, unsolved murders and each more chilling than the last. Eight people were attacked in total and five of the victims were killed leading to an investigation full of mistakes. Texarkana saw its share of violence, but these attacks shook the residents of Texarkana to their very core. In this video, let's delve into the chilling details of the Texarkana Moonlight Murderers, exploring the investigations, the victims, and the legacy of this terrifying chapter in American criminal history. The first attack took place on the evening of Friday, February 22nd, 1946. This night, among the events that would follow, would haunt the small town for years to come and were only the beginning of a chilling crime spree. The mysterious mask attacker, who would later be dubbed as the Phantom Killer, would go on to commit a series of brutal murders terrorizing the residents of Texarkana and leaving a trail of bloodshed and fear in his wake. A young couple returning from a date to the movies parked their car in a popular area known as Lover's Lane. As they sat in their car, enjoying each other's company, they were completely unaware of the horror that was about to unfold. At around 11.45 p.m., a man wearing a white cloth mask suddenly appeared shining a flashlight into the vehicle and blinding the couple. Fear gripped their hearts as the menacing figure ordered them out of their car at gunpoint. Jimmy Hollis, 25, and Mary Jean Larry, 19, complied, but their nightmare was only just beginning. The masked man ordered Jimmy to take off his pants, and as he did, he was struck in the head twice with a pistol, knocking him unconscious. Mary Jean would later tell police that the man hit Jimmy so hard in the head that she believed he had been shot. Horrifyingly, that sound Mary Jean heard was Jimmy's skull fracturing. In a panic, she gave the man Jimmy's wallet, thinking that the masked man was there to rob him. That was not the case, and the man told Mary Jean to get up and run. The terrified girl ran to a parked car she saw off the road and only to find it empty and the man quickly caught up with her. He knocked her down and assaulted her. Fortunately, during the aftershuffle, Mary was able to get away and run, 
when the lights of an oncoming car scared the perpetrator off, and she was able to flag the car down and was taken to a nearby restaurant to call the authorities. The police questioned her, and she said the attacker was a black man wearing a white bag or pillowcase over his head with holes cut out for the eyes and mouth. However, when Jimmy regained consciousness, he contradicted her, saying the attacker was a white man. The conflicting story sounded suspicious to the police, and when they considered how brutal the attack was, they assumed that Mary Jean was lying and that she knew her attacker. They said he was black just to cover for the mystery man. Is it possible that the police didn't believe the girl because of her gender, being it was 1949? But the truth was, the couple were traumatized and both had sustained head injuries. And with that in mind, it's easy to see how they could have identified two different race of men when questioned later. Mary Jean was so traumatized and upset that the police thought she was lying, that she intended to just move away from the Texarkana area. Over the next several weeks, the phantom killer would strike again and again, and attacking couples parked in remote Lover's Lane. As the evening breeze rustled through the trees, whispers of unease began to spread. Tells of a faceless menace, a predator that stalked the night, seeming to revel in the frenzy that he was creating, searched for his next victim. The town's atmosphere was heavy with an unsettling tension, as if the shadows themselves held their breath, waiting for the next scream to pierce the night. The killer's modus operandi was as eerie as it was distinctive. He would approach his victims under the cover of darkness, his face obscured by a white cloth mask, reminiscent of a ghostly apparition. The brutality of his attacks and the sadistic precision with which they were carried out seemed to defy reason, leaving even the most seasoned investigators at a loss. A month later, on March 24th, a motorist spotted a car with two occupants parked in a lover's lane near U.S. Highway 67 West and thought the couple in the car had slept there overnight. When the Good Samaritan got closer to the car, he noticed that they were not sleeping, but were dead. Police discovered that the man, Richard L. Griffin, 29, had been shot twice in the car, and his girlfriend, Polly Ann Moore, 17, was found shot in the back seat. Outside the car, the police had found a blanket covered in blood and determined that Polly had been killed in the blanket and then placed in the back seat of the vehicle. Unlike the first attack, some evidence was found at the scene. A single 32 bullet casing had been left behind. The Texas Rangers and the FBI analyzed the bullet and determined that it was likely fired from a 32 Colt automatic pistol. Strangely, the two victims were laid to rest before pathologists could examine them, which was not standard protocol for police investigations. To this day, the truth about why the two were not autopsied remains unknown. As the body count rose, so too did the town's collective fear. No one felt safe from the phantom menace that haunted their streets. The once thriving nightlife of Texarkana was reduced to a ghost town, with residents huddling behind locked doors and praying that they would not be the next to fall prey to the Moonlight Murderer. The authorities were desperate to catch the elusive killer, but every lead seemed to vanish like smoke in the wind and leaving behind only a trail of blood and tears. By now, the killer was clearly quickening to his task. Just three weeks later, in the early hours of April 14, 1946, Paul Martin, 17, had picked up his girlfriend, Betty Jo Booker, 15, 
from a Veterans of Foreign Wars club, where she was a member of the evening's musical entertainment. Betty Jo's mom grew concerned when her daughter didn't stop by the house to drop off her saxophone before spending some time with her boyfriend. Her mother had called the couple's friends, but nobody had seen them. Police were called and a search was started. Paul's body was soon discovered just off the side of a road. He had been shot four times, once through his nose and once in the back of the neck, and once in the right hand and once through the ribs. Betty Jo's body was discovered almost two miles away from her boyfriend. She was found behind a tree with two gunshot wounds, once in the face and again once through her chest. Paul's car was found an additional three miles away from Betty Jo's remains, with the keys still in the condition. The police could not determine who was murdered first, but like the previous murder, a bullet casing indicated that a 32 Colt automatic pistol was the murder weapon. The final attack of the Phantom Killer occurred on May 3, 1946, in the evening, and was very different to the previous attacks. Virgil Starks, 37, was shot twice in the back of his head through a window while he read his newspaper. When his wife Katie Starks, 36, heard glass breaking, she rushed to see what happened. When she discovered her husband's dead body, she ran to phone the police, but was shot in the face twice through the same window that her husband was. By some miracle, she managed to escape to her neighbor's home across the street and was able to tell the neighbor that her husband was dead before she lost consciousness. Katie Stark survived her injuries and fully recovered. When police questioned her after her emergency surgery, she couldn't tell investigators who attacked her and killed her husband because she hadn't seen the perpetrator's face. All that was left behind at the scene was a black and red flashlight that Kitty had never seen before. The brutal nature of the attacks, coupled with the killer's apparent ability to evade capture, has led to endless speculation and numerous theories about the identity of the Phantom Killer. In an attempt to solve the Texarkana Moonlight murders, the police brought over 400 suspects in for questioning, but they were all cleared. The leading investigator, Texas Ranger Manuel Trezazes Gonzalez, realized the attacks took place every three weeks and attempted to set up a trap for Phantom Killer. Two undercover officers with mannequins posed as teenagers parked in Rivers Lane. But the police had no luck. The Phantom never struck again. Residents in Texarkana began buying guns, guard dogs, and blinds for their windows. Curfews were set, and people locked their doors for the first time. The killer was never identified, but two men were considered people of interest. The first possible Phantom of the Texarkana Moonlight Murders was an 18-year-old H.B. Tennyson. Tennyson committed suicide in 1948. He left behind a suicide note confessing, being responsible for the Paul Martin and Betty Jo Booker murders and the Starks murder. However, a friend of Tennyson's came forward to the police, telling them that his friend didn't kill anyone. He explained that they were playing cards at home when they had heard the news reporting on Paul Martin and Betty Jo Booker's murders. The second possible phantom of the Texarkana Moonlight murders was a notorious car thief named Muel Swinney, 29. Police discovered that on the night of every attack, a car was reported stolen and later found abandoned by the thief. Swinney's wife was seen driving a stolen car and the husband and wife were arrested. Swinney's wife confessed that her husband was the killer, but her story was inconsistent and changing details each time she was subject to questioning. She did mention a location where 
Some of Paul and Betty Jo's belongings were left by Swinney. But other than her confession, there was nothing solid to tie Swinney to the Moonlight Murders. His wife was determined to be unreliable as a witness and could not testify against her husband in any trial. He was sentenced to prison for his habitual grand theft auto charges, where he would die almost 50 years later in 1994. Many had found it suspicious that Swinney and his wife had gotten married in the days before they were arrested. Did Swinney use marriage to keep the only person who could send him to the electric chair silent? To this day, the phantom killer responsible for the Texarkana Moonlight murders has never been identified. The murders have become part of the morbid history of the area. Every year around Halloween, the 1976 film, The Town That Dreaded Sundown, based on the Texarkana Moonlight murders, is shown in a local park as the finale of the annual Movies in the Park event hosted by the Texarkana Department of Parks and Recreation. For a terrifying series of unsolved murders that sent residents of Texarkana deep into the throes of terror, the tradition of free public screenings of a film based on the murders is definitely just as creepy as a serial killer who disappeared into the night, never to be seen again. Yet the true story behind the Texarkana Moonlight Murders is just as chilling as anything seen on a silver screen and made all the more unsettling because the case remains unsolved nearly 70 years later. Despite extensive investigations and numerous suspects, the case remains unsolved to this day, with the identity of the Texarkana Moonlight Murderer shrouded in mystery and darkness. The Texarkana Moonlight Murders remains one of the most chilling and enigmatic crime sprees in American history. Thank you guys for watching another Tells Told in the Dark. If you liked it, please share out. Please leave me a comment. I love, 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 love my comments. And thank you guys all for your support. Thank you.